Good morning, church. Good morning. I said good morning, church. Good morning. Amen, amen. Let's praise God on this wonderful Sunday. Pastor, Pastor Davison, Dr. Uh, Larry W. Davison, to First Lady Davison, God bless you. To all of my brothers and sisters in Christ, I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Um, we will start devotion. I will be reading from the first chapter of St. John, the Gospel according to John, 
uh, which reads as, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave Power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of the blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. I've read for you John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. May the Lord have a blessing for the readers and doers of his mighty word. Eternal God, our Father, we come before you today with thanksgiving in our hearts. Father God, thanking you for all of the blessings you have bestowed on us. My God, you have been so good to us. Even when we turn our back on you, you've been good to us. Even when we decide to go into another direction, you've been good to us. Even when we decide to lie to you and even lie to ourselves, you've been good to us. And so, Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for our laying down last night and our getting up this morning. Father, we know it is only because of you, Father, that we were able to get up this morning, Father God, and be able to have use of all of our limbs this morning, Father God, be able to see out of our eyes this morning, Father God, and even have the mind to come and worship you today, Father God. It was all because of you, so we say thank you today, Father. We ask that you may forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness, Father God. We want to be more like your son Jesus today, Father God. Father, we pray for the sick and shut in today, Father God. That you may wrap your arms around them today, Father God. That you may heal them of any sickness that may be plaguing their body, Father God. That even when the doctor don't know what's next to do, Father God, that you step into the room, Father God. And you lay your healing hands on their body today, Father God. And heal them of their sickness, Father God. Lord, I know that you are able to do it, Father God. Lord, because you left on record that you are able to do all things, Father God. All things above what we've even thinking, Father God. God. All things above what we even ask for today, Father God. So, Lord, today I ask that you come into this place, Father God, and bless everybody in here today, Father God. We're all in the need of a blessing today, Father God. Some of us may not know exactly what we need, Father God, but, Lord, we know that you are all-knowing, so you know, Father God. Lord, you know, Father God, and so we ask that you may come into this place today, Father God. Fill us up with your Holy Spirit, Father God. Take away our thoughts from what we went through this week, Father God. And just get our minds fascinated on your son Jesus on that cross, Father God. And him dying with his head and the locks of his shoulder, Father God. But you raised him with all power in his hands three days later, Father God. I ask you today, Father God, to have mercy on us all, Father God. I thank you for your divine protection, Father God. Oh, Lord, there's people that's dying each and every day, Father God, from all types of sickness, Father God. But for some reason, you keep waking me up every morning. 
And so, Father, I say thank you today. I pray that you bless our pastor today, Father God. Give him strength the way he is weakened, Father God. Lord, just rain blessings down on his head today, Father God. Then we pray for his wife, Sister Davison, as well, Father God, that you may just wrap your arms around her, Father God, that you may heal her ankle completely, Father God. Lord, we ask these blessings in your son Jesus' name, Father God. Lord, and then I just ask that you bless every church that is open in your name today, Father God. And then in your son Jesus' name we pray, and for his sake, amen.
for your grace. I don't know where I'd be without you. I don't know where I'd be without your grace and your mercy. Lord, I know I needed your grace. I know I needed your mercy. I ain't got no problem with raising my hand and saying, I wouldn't have made it without you, Lord. Lord, I know I should have been in the cemetery somewhere. I know I should have been down in prison somewhere. But Lord, you found some grace and some mercy to give my way, Father God. I thank you today, Father God. I give your name the glory today, Father God. I say hallelujah today, Father God. Because you are awesome, Father God. Uh, how many of you know that we serve an awesome God today, Father God? That he is able to do all things. Yes, Lord, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Now it is time for our responsive reading. All that could. Please stand. You can find the responsive reading in Romans 10. Romans 10. It'll be verses 1 through 10. Romans 10. verses 1 through 10 I will begin brethren my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Or who shall descend into the deep that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. That if thou shalt confess thy, with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession made unto salvation. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord. I stand before you to do the announcements um, for Sunday, December 13th, 2020. As we all know that we are um, having worship in indoors now due to the weather, so we are asking that you will please wash your hands with soap and water and practice social distancing. Spread yourselves throughout the congregation. Use sanitizer and refrain from hugs, cheek kissing, and handshaking. We recommend anyone that has a compromised immune system or pre-existing conditions, please refrain from worshiping in the sanctuary for the benefits of yourselves and others. Amen. 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 
Greater Fisher Missionary Baptist Church has virtual prayer gathering on Wednesday from 6 to 7 o'clock p.m. on Zoom. Scan the QR code with your smartphone camera to join the Zoom call or reach out to Sister Lorraine Davidson for the Zoom link. Email her at Lorraine L. Davidson at yahoo.com. Amen. Those who would like to, contri uh, to contribute to the church's fundraisers for improvements, you can mail in your contributions along with tithes and offering to Greater Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, 206 South Falcon Street, South Bend, Indiana, 46619. Scan the QR code with your smartphone camera or, spin, or send them electronically through Cash App to Dollar Sign Friendship 95. Amen, amen, amen. If anyone has money to turn in, you may turn it in to Sister Prince or Brother Donaldson. Amen. Let us continue to pray for the sick and shut-in and the bereaved family. I also would like to announce that Greater Fisher Missionary Baptist Church will have Christmas activities for the youth. These activities will be posted in next week's bulletin, and they will be posted on the greaterfriendshipfamily.org website. And we want to just thank God that we are still finding ways to be creative, um, that we are drawing our youth in. Um, during this time, you know, the pandemic has changed a lot of things for us, but for us to still have the ability to reach out to our members and anybody in the community that sees our um, videos uh, through our YouTube channel or through our Facebook page. So we thank God. And again, we want to keep in the Christmas spirit. We know Christmas is coming up and it's an exciting year for all of us. It's a time that we can share our gifts and share also what we have experienced through 2020. I know many of people resolutions for uh, 2021 would be no COVID. <laughs> We're having a year where we can go back to just having, living life uh, the way that we want to live in. And I know the pandemic has kind of changed it up, but it's also a good thing for the pandemic. It's not all bad because it gives us time to reflect and, and to see what God has really given us. And that is the spirit of life. Yes. And so we thank God. Um, at this time, we would like to just welcome all of you, our, our virtual viewers and also our physical uh, viewers here in the church. We thank you guys for continuing to support us during this time. And we just ask that if you are viewing us online, that you would like and subscribe to our page on Facebook, but also uh, look us on YouTube and like and share on there as well. We yeah. want to make sure that we are doing the work in the, uh, and doing what God has called us to do here at Greater Friendship. Yeah. So if you are liking what you see, please feel free to comment in the comment box and leave anything that you would like to say um, what you see doing us doing here at Greater Friendship. With that being said, um, I will read the scripture of the week. It says, the next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John 1 and 29. These are your announcements, Reverend Larry W. Davis, the pastor, and Sister Leandra Cash as your announcing clerk. Giving our praises and thanks to God for our announcing clerk. We pray her continuous uh, growth in the Lord. Uh, by way of announcements, uh, we want to ask you to continue to pray for our bereaved families, uh, that's especially those that's in the church. And, and then uh, we wanna, want you to make sure uh, that you are practicing uh, social distancing and that you're wearing a face mask uh, and that you are adhering uh, to the practices to stay safe we understand that maybe starting tomorrow, there will be those uh, in our nation who will start receiving uh, the vaccinations uh, for COVID-19. We thank God for that. Uh, but it's going to be probably another year uh, before everybody gets it or until we get out of this uh, is the anticipation. So we want to ask you to please remember uh, to stay safe and, and, and practice safety as it relates to COVID-19. Uh, we also uh, want to ask you, next Sunday, we want as many as possible to sit over here on this side. We're going to start with uh, illustrations 
and we want you to be able to see. And I, everybody see where Sister Davis, raise your hand, Sister Davis. Y'all see where Sister Davis is sitting, and she's sitting next to the wall. And so next Sunday, we want everybody to sit as close to the wall as you can on either side. Uh, so what? Every, every other pew, yeah. So we don't, we don't have a lot of uh, people coming. We're just doing enough for streaming. But as many as can, let's sit on this side and let's sit next to the wall with every other pew. And uh, maybe uh, every other pew you next to the wall and maybe you can sit in the middle uh, every other pew as well. And that way we're keeping our six feet and please have on your mask. And the reason being we want everybody to be able to, to view uh, the illustrations uh, for next Sunday. And we'll, we'll try to be prepared. I want everyone to, during the week, I want you to read Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, I'll start with verse 10, but if you want to start earlier than verse 10, you can. And we're going to go into a series on, uh, concerning putting on the whole armor of God. And uh, this is something that the Lord has been working with me on. And, and I believe that this will be one of the most powerful series that I've done uh, as it relates to our present circumstances. And so I want you to come um, next Sunday with pencil and paper that you can write on, maybe some things that you can remember, uh, because I want to try to equip you uh, for the challenges that we're facing. Amen. So please come with pencil and paper next Sunday. And, um, and I'm asking you to sit on the outside edges because uh, I'll probably be coming down the aisle or whatever, but we do want to do some teaching as far as equipping the congregation Amen. to face some of the challenges uh, that, that we are dealing with now. And so, again, we got Christmas coming up, and I'll probably pause and um, pre preach a Christmas message in the middle of the series. And, then I'll get right back on target, and first of the year, you know, we'll do a first of the year message, and, but we'll continue till we get done with that, putting on that whole armor of God. Um, and so I want you to keep keep me in prayer, and and ask the Lord to speak to me uh, as I speak to you. But I believe it will be a blessing to you. I uh, want to remind you to please. I want you to find, y'all listening, I want you to find someone who have not accepted Jesus Christ as their savior and make them your prayer partner. I and then I want you to pray for them at least once a week. Find one person who have not accepted Christ and I want you to pray for them every day, but I want you to pray with them at least once a week. And that's all I'm asking you to do is pray for that one person once a week. But whenever you pray every day, pray for them. And then we'll also pray with you concerning them. And so I'll stop here. Let us remember that our sick and less fortunate Let's do all that we can to make their lives a little bit better. Uh, as you know, we do have the mourning garment out. Uh, we are still mourning uh, the death of Mother Freeman, but then in that Austin family. But as you know, that after the funeral, uh, oftentimes that's when the healing begins, and sometimes it takes years for that healing to take place. And so the Freeman and the Austin family are not the only ones that's grieving right now. So I just say pray for those that are in bereavement. Uh, pray for the Larry family. Uh, uh, precious, precious. 
uh, she's seeing the doctor either today or tomorrow. We want to make sure that we keep her in prayer. Mother Prince, um, we want to make sure we keep her in prayer as well. Uh, she's in a recovery stage, and we thank God for her. So with these few words, God bless you. We ask the choir to come with two selections, and then Reverend Morris will come with the morning message, and after the invitation, we'll do altar call and the benediction. <laughs>
and I can understand that a little bit better. Because it doesn't matter how you feel, when you start praising God, you just start feeling a little bit better, don't you? Amen. It doesn't even matter what problems you're going through. But whenever you worship God, amen, blessings just start coming back down. You can feel better. Amen, amen. And, uh, amen, it's just a wonderful thing to give God praise. Amen. Amen. We are anticipating and continuing having a wonderful time. I will not hold you long. I'm going to just present him. I'm going to introduce him to some and pre present him to others. And that is none other than our son in the ministry. Reverend Terrell Morris. Hear ye him. Amen, amen. It's giving reverence to God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, for my being here and honor to my daddy. My pastor, my counselor, and teacher, Dr. Davidson. I'm also to my mother in the ministry, Sister Davidson. To my wife, who is here joining us live via my phone. I bless you as well, honey, and I love you. Thank God for you. Um, to all of my brothers and sisters in Christ, I greet you all in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to hold you guys long. I'm going to get in here and do what um, pastor has tasked me with to do, and that's to preach the word. Um, all that can stand, please do for the reading of the word. You can find the word in the 11th chapter of, Ga of John. Excuse me, 11th chapter of John. It's the gospel according to John. Um, for the sake of time, I'm only going to read verse 3. Um, but when you have time, read from verse 1 to verse 32. But for the sake of time, I'm only going to read verse 3. So John 11 and 3. When you have it, please say amen. I will read. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest, is sick. I want to talk to you on the topic of he got the message. He got the message. He got the message. All right, all right. All wise, eternal God, our Father, I thank thee for another opportunity to preach your word. Yes, yes. Father, now I pray mm -hmm. that you may take control over my body, mm -hmm. take control over my mind take control over my tongue and speak Lord until your people are healed speak Lord until you may be glorified Lord I pray that you may forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness these blessings I pray is in your son Jesus name and for his sake amen he got the message um, everyone knows that John 11 is the story about Lazarus in the Bible. Everyone knows Lazarus got sick and, and died and Jesus came and rose him from the dead. The story is known throughout all generations and all religions. Everyone knows that this was the miracle that made the Pharisees and chief priests get together and plan to kill Jesus. But one thing I noticed is a lot of people don't talk about Martha and Mary, Lazarus' sisters. They don't talk about what they, what they went through during this story. Uh, they sent Jesus a message when their brother became ill. And if you just look at the surface, it looks as if Jesus didn't care because the text says he stayed where he was for two extra days after receiving the news. 
I, I don't know how how many times I've prayed and I felt like my prayers fell on deaf ears because I felt like there was no movement from God. But, but I came to tell you today that just because he didn't move when we wanted him to move doesn't mean he didn't move in a favorable direction for us all. Uh, I know that's hard to recognize, especially as we sit here in the midst of a pandemic facing a deadly virus that, it, that just a few days ago on December 9th killed more Americans than two planes crashing into the World Trade Center killed on September 11, 2001. But I wanted to suggest to you all today that, that Jesus didn't forget about us. And even though we are going through hard times, we have to recognize that we serve a God that never fails. And we have to continue to trust in him. Even when tears are falling, we have to trust in him. Even when we don't understand, we have to trust in him. Even when we don't agree with the direction he has gone in, we have to trust in him because we know that even though we are hurting and even though we have tears falling from our eyes, even though we are in pain and we wish the outcome could be different, we serve a God that just never fails and holds the world in the palm of his hands. And so I came to tell everyone that has been going through any trials or tribulations in their life and has been praying to the Lord, he got your message. And the purpose of this message is to highlight the fact that even though Jesus didn't show up when Mary and Martha wanted him to, he still received their message. And I know that may bring the question of what evidence do we have that shows us that Jesus received their message? Well, 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 the first thing I've seen is that he acknowledged their message. Jesus acknowledged their message. So, so we know that Lazarus was Jesus' good friend. So much so that when Lazarus got sick, Mary and Martha, Lazarus' sisters, uh, sent Jesus a message saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou love is sick. And verse 4 lets us know that the message got to Jesus because it says when Jesus, when Jesus heard that, he said this sickness is not unto death. This word heard in the Greek is akuo, which is to listen to or to understand. I, I thank God that I have a God that listens to what I have to say because sometimes when I'm on the phone with my wife, I'll say, honey, you're not paying attention. And she'll, she'll just respond by saying, I heard what you said, but I don't really care if you heard what I'm saying. I want you to listen or pay attention to what I'm saying because you can hear something and not pay attention to it. Uh, sometimes my wife might be on the phone with her aunts and her cousins and I'll be sitting right next to her and I can hear them he he and and ha ha and, but I'm not paying attention to nothing that they even saying but, but, but this text tells us that Jesus listens to or understands I thank God that I have a God that understands because sometimes when I get emotional I start to stutter and I trip over my words sometimes I don't even know what to say or how to explain how I'm feeling I just say mm 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 but I thank God because I have a God that understands what I'm trying to tell him uh, so they, they sent the, the message and Jesus acknowledged this message so we should be glad that he received um the message and he even acknowledged the message but there's a problem here because jesus said this sickness is not unto death but we all know that lazarus died so 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 the question is did jesus lie um could this have been a a a, a, a situation that Jesus lost control because he's saying that his sickness is not unto death, but we know that Lazarus died. 
Well, well, you have to dig a little deeper into this text. If I was talking to Pastor Davidson, he'd say you have to use a, a surgical knife. You can't use no no but, no butcher knife uh, to understand exactly what Jesus is saying when he said this sickness is not unto death. Right. Um, this word unto in the Greek is pros, which is translated to either destination or to. Which means this sickness is not destination death. Uh, let me see if I can explain this better for you. If you get in your car and you pull up your GPS, it'll have a location where you are, where you started at. And then there'll be a destination spot. The start location is where you are when you start the trip. And the destination is the end of the trip or the final Destination. I, I think that that might have helped us get a better understanding of, of what Jesus is saying. This sickness does not end in death. Uh, uh, so now you understand what Jesus was saying. Now we have to get another understanding because the world we live in teaches us that death is final. That's, that's, what I've, that's what I've been told that this is the end, is that death is final. And we know that Lazarus died, so how does this sickness not end in death? Right. Well, 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 the Bible tells us to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, so we know that earthly death is just temporary. Right. Because the Bible teaches us that one day, someday, yeah. everyone that accepted Jesus Christ in their life will be living, not dead, but alive in paradise for eternity. So this death was just something that he had to pass through. Yeah. Uh, yea, though I walk through <laughs> the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no, no evil. So we, say, we see that this statement that Jesus was making is an acknowledgement uh, to the prayer or the message that Mary and Martha sent to the Lord. But, but I, but I want to say I'm just glad that Jesus... It's not like me. Right. I'm glad he's not like me because I got five kids and sometimes my kids get on my nerves. And when they go to saying, dad, 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 I sit right there and act like I can't even hear. Him. But I got a God that I serve that every time I call out to him, it don't matter what's going on. It don't matter how bad I've been getting on his nerves. <laughs> he hears my call every single time it doesn't matter if I call about the same thing every single day I serve a God that hears me that hears my cry and acknowledges when I call out to him I, I, I believe it's something in, 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 the, in the book of revelations that said there was a book and the book was of all of our prayers so not only when we pray do he even acknowledge the prayers, but they are documented in a book. But, 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 but. The first thing we see is that he acknowledged their message. And so the next thing that we stumble across here is that he made arrangements. He made arrangements to come. So first he acknowledged their message, then he made arrangements to come. So the text says that Jesus waited for two days before he even told his disciples. But when he did, the text says in, in verse 11, these things said he. And after that said unto them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth. But I go that I may awake him out of sleep. And so we see that Jesus is making a plan or arrangements to go see about Lazarus. Uh, by this time, Jesus is saying Lazarus is asleep. Uh, but, but, but the only message Jesus got was that Lazarus was sick. But now he's saying he is asleep. Jesus didn't receive no other message. But since he is an all-knowing God, he knew that at this time Lazarus had died. So his disciples responded uh, that if he is asleep, he'll be okay. We don't need to go. Once he wake up, he'll feel better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sound like my granddaddy when I used to tell him when I was a kid, I had a headache. Boy, go lay down. When you get up, you'll feel a little better. But, <laughs> but, but, but we see is that the disciples were confused. Uh, uh, because Jesus said Lazarus was asleep. So Jesus clears it up 
and, and, and lets them know by simply saying Lazarus is dead. All right. uh, you see, we don't think like the Lord Jesus thinks. So when the Lord first said Lazarus was asleep, he was speaking on his terms. But since the disciples were confused, he decided to speak in the disciples' terms and stated it plainly. You see, Jesus said he was asleep because Jesus knew all he had to do is say it and Lazarus would have jumped up like he was just taking a midday nap. You see, so, so, so uh, we don't have the same understanding as Jesus has. That is why it's so important to consult with the Lord because some of us be in relationships thinking it's just sleep and needs to be revived and in actuality is dead as a doorknob. Or some of us be in situations that we thought was dead, but all we needed to do was call on the Lord so he could come and revive it. We don't have the same understanding as the Lord has. Uh, uh, so now Jesus is saying, but I go to wake him. So, so when he said Lazarus was asleep, in our terms, that means Lazarus was dead. Then he says, but I go. We, we was talking about this but yet last, last Sunday in Sunday school because I love this word, but. Uh, it, it's a conjunction and has the capability to completely change what was just said. So Jesus says, Lazarus is asleep, but I go. You see, it's a lot of us in here today that has a but God story. I was sick, but I was unqualified for this position, but the doctor said we don't know what else to do, but I once was lost, but now I'm found. Blind, but now I see. You see, I love this but word because in Lazarus' situation, I was dead, but the Lord made arrangements to come see about me. And you see, Jesus is not like your, your no good friend that plan a vacation with you. And after you pay for your flight and your hotel, they call you, let you know, ah, I'm not going to be able to make it to this trip. Uh, because when Jesus makes uh, arrangement, he always shows up on time, no matter how difficult the task may be. When he arranges something, he shows up. You see, he showed up for me one Friday afternoon on an old rugged cross, stretched out wide, with a crown of thorns placed upon his head, with nails in his hands and a spike in his feet, and his head in the locks of his shoulders. He died on that cross, was placed in a borrowed tomb for three days. Went to hell in my place, but was rose with all power in his hands. I'm just trying to tell y'all about when he made arrangements and showed up uh, uh, for me. And I, I told you, I'm not going to hold y'all too long, but I wanted to tell y'all that he acknowledged their, their message. Um, he, he acknowledged their message. He made arrangements to come and see about them. But then the text lets us know that he arrived. He arrived. And uh, I want you to realize something. Uh, when Jesus arrived, he had two conversations. Uh, one with Mary and one with Martha. And they said the same thing. If you were here, my brother would still be alive. If you was here, my brother would still be alive. Somebody in here feels the same way. Somebody is saying if you were here, we wouldn't be in the midst of this pandemic. I wouldn't be going through this storm right now. We wouldn't be in the midst of sickness. We wouldn't be in the midst of death. I wouldn't have had to bury mama. I wouldn't have had to bury daddy. If you were here, grandmama and, da and granddaddy would still be here. But beloved, I came to tell you that he got your message. And when you called, he acknowledged your message. And he's made arrangements to come down here. And when he arrives, the Bible tells us that at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, 
Death is swallowed up in victory. And then we'll live forever in the land of milk and honey where there'll be no more pain, no more sickness, Mm -hmm. no coronavirus, Mm -hmm. no cancer, no diabetes, no HIV, no AIDS, no guns to kill nobody. And they said that we don't even need the sun because the glory of God lit up the place. And the sun was the light thereof. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 I rose to extend you an invitation. You can come by letter, a Christian experience, or a candidate for baptism, but whatever way would you come? Is there one? Is there one today? Would you come? Is there one? Overwhelmed by the weight of the sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? If there is someone here today. who after hearing this message you realize that Jesus acknowledged the fact that he got the message and then he made arrangements to come and you know that the message that Jesus got is your condition he understand what you are going through and then you recognize that he made arrangements amen that he making arrangements to come solve whatever issue you may be going through you can come right now Israel one would you come if you are lost you can come to Christ you can you can come and confess him as your Lord And if you believe that Jesus is Lord and you want him to be your Lord, you can come as a candidate for baptism. But not only I'm talking to those who want to accept Jesus as Lord, but maybe you have walked away from the Lord and you decided that you want to come back. You can come on your own Christian experience. Is there one? Or there may be someone here who simply need a church home. And you decided that this is the church that you want to come to. If that is the case, you can come right now. We will love you. We will accept you. And we will express God's love toward you. Is there one? Would you come right now? Is there one? You can come right now. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We thank God for another. Amen. Amen. You can come on your own Christian experience. Have you decided that your way wasn't the best way, that you want to give your life over to God? You can come as a candidate for baptism if after hearing this powerful message that Jesus was willing to acknowledge your situation and then make arrangements to come and then actually showed up. You can come right now. You can come on your own Christian experience candidate for baptism whatever way or you can come by letter but whatever case if you need a church home you can come right now is there one
the message that Jesus got is the one whom you love is sick. And I came to tell you that if you are out of Christ, you are sin sick. But you notice that Jesus will make arrangements to come to your rescue. Amen. He will make arrangements. But oftentimes we make arrangements, but then we don't keep those arrangements. But Jesus will. Whatever your circumstances are, Jesus will not only make those arrangements, but he will show up. And he will show up in your life. He will make his arrival if you just recognize that it is him that you need in your life. He will show up. He will arrive. And guess what? He will arrive on time. Amen. You might be looking for him. He, he's on his way. He is on his way. But he want to make sure that when he gets there, God will be glorified. That's why he didn't come immediately. You know, they had said, you know, the mother folk he had raised from the dead. He said, well, they were just in a coma. Real death really didn't take place. Because the spirit don't leave the body until after three days. That's what, that's what the practice was. So Jesus waited four days. <laughs> well, there was no doubt. Oh, Lazarus was sure enough dead. Amen. The spirit was gone, even according to their custom. Spirit was gone. They said it leaves after three days. Jesus showed up on day four. But now see, now, now what you going to say? And after Jesus raised him from the dead and then they start planning to kill Jesus, they said, we got to kill Lazarus again. <laughs> as long as Lazarus walking around here, amen, testifying that this was the Messiah, we got to kill Lazarus. It wasn't written on whether or not they found him, but we know they was planning on killing him again. Amen. Amen. We say amen. Amen. Read, Sister Clerk. Amen. Lebez Davidson, we're going to let you come in your own way. Uh, good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, good morning, family, and our virtual family out there. Um, I stood for, for two reasons. Uh, one for, well, one main reason. One main reason is that I, I want prayer from you guys for my family and my, my friends and all my loved ones because my family is under attack yeah. and yeah. I see it clear as day. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt in my mind. Mm -hmm. So one, I just, just to pray for my family, um, but also to pray for my son as well. He has, next year he he has um, surgery on um, this spot on his his head that's been growing. It was like his birthmark, but now it's it's been bothering him. So um, I still want to, to pray for that. But two, um, I've, I've kind of, for the last couple of years, I've kind of been, took a step back to watch and, and see how things kind of took an effect. And so um, my family right now, um, our faith is being challenged. Um, our perseverance is being challenged. Our courage is being attacked. And I refuse to just 
stand here while the devil is working and sitting on my hands. And, and so I just, I just pray for um, God to light that fire that's within me because I'm tired of it. I'm, I'm not going to let him sit here and move throughout my church. I'm not going to sit here and let him move throughout my family. I'm not. We not. And I'm not going to let that happen. So um, just pray, pray for me. Um, in this new journey that I'm, I'm setting out to be. And, um, and I pray for growth. Pray for growth for the church. I pray for maturity of the, tr- the church. I pray for our ministries that we're setting out to do. So I want to set out this time out today for us to pray for everything that we're doing now, that we've done in the past, and what we're going to do in the future. Because we're not going to sit on our hands. We are not going to sit here and let the devil work while we're sitting on our hands. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that here. So I'm, I came to speak for my family. I came to speak for my church, and we're going to pray for this. Yeah. Amen. 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 Now, before we go to the next, this just show how the Lord is leading me. I had already said uh, a few months ago that once I get through with this series, I was planning on going into the historical books because I was doing a lot of narrative preaching. But then the Lord switched it to Ephesians chapter 6 that says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you might be able to withstand. And so you come in at a time to basically introduce my next series because what I'll be doing is equipping the congregation because families are under attack. And you know why families are are under attack? Because it is the families that make up the church. And if the devil is successful in separating families, then he can separate the church. And so we got to fight for the family. And so in the next, I would say, five or six, seven weeks, that's what I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to talk about the devil. I'm going to introduce the devil to you. I don't want, I don't, the, the ones that's here today, don't miss the next six or seven weeks, please. Because what I'm going to be doing is equipping you. I'm gonna, I want to equip you. I'm going to let the Lord work through me to equip you that you may be able to withstand against the tricks and the schemes of the devil. And so we want to empower you. We want to build your faith. So as you go through this, that you can go through it with an attitude. I'm talking about that attitude when it looks like your neck is half broke and you start swirling that hand and swirling that neck. But this time we swirl in the hand and the neck for God because we're expressing our faith in God against the devil. So we are equipping you to fight against the devil starting next Sunday. We've already been doing it, but we're getting ready to really focus on it now. So I want you all here prepared with pencil and paper ready to go. Amen? Amen. We're going to pray for you. But we also are going to work on equipping you as well. Amen. Read, Sister Clerk. Next we have Joanna Bullock, known as April, and she's coming for Christian experience. Amen. You said Joanne? Stand, Sister Joanne. Is it Bullock? Bullock. All right, Sister Bullock, we are just so glad to have you. And you say you're coming on your Christian experience. And what church did you get that experience from? Sweet Home Baptist Church. Sweet Home Rudy, my friend. Amen, amen. And how long have you been gone? Uh, maybe like three years now. About th- oh, okay, all right. The only thing I need to do is just inform him that you are now with us. And so I will do that. And then after I have a conversation with him, then we'll come back and give you the right hand of fellowship. Amen? amen. All right, we're going to receive you, Sister Bullock. <laughs> amen, amen. You all remain standing, LaBeth, you can stand. The rest of the congregation, would you please stand? Amen. Let us petition the throne of grace. Any special requests? 
I know that we're going to pray for Precious. We're going to pray for the recovery of uh, Mother Prince. I know she's doing pretty good, but we're going to keep on praying. The Morris household, we're going to pray for them. Amen. Sister Austin, we're going to pray for her and her family, including her dad and mother. Amen. Any other special requests? Uh, Landon and Brother Davis, pray for him. Sister Davidson and Brother Donaldson. Oh, the Donaldson family is going through bereavement right now. Uh, Sister Beverly is the sister of Reverend Wells, and their dad passed away, and I believe, is it Wednesday? They will funeralize him on Wednesday, so we want to make sure that we are praying for them. What time is that? 12 o'clock? It's at Second Baptist, right? Just the family. Just the immediate family at 12 o'clock. So we just want to pray for them and, uh, and just know that uh, these are tough times. I don't care how, uh, how long they may have or may not have known. But when death finally makes it a rival, it's always painful. And sometimes it hurt a long time, a long time. All of us grieve in different time periods. But it's real, and so we should pray for those who are in bereavement. Pray for those with COVID-19, and pray for the Davison family who recognize that his family is under attack. And um, we want to make sure that we pray for the the Donaldson family. The Johnson family, still in bereavement, pray for them. Father in heaven, Father in heaven, Father in heaven, we call you Father. We know you're the creator of the universe. But Jesus told us whenever we pray, call you Father. And we call you Father. Though you're creator, you act like our Father. You protect us when we need protecting you. You provide for us when we need provisions. You just act like a Father. Although you're in heaven, you're here on earth with us. And although you're here with us, you're still holy. Your name is holy. And Father, what we want to happen, we want your kingdom to come. And we want your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's what we want. We're asking you to give us this day, this day, our daily bread. But then, Lord, we want you to forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And, Lord, you know that we're weak people, so lead us not into temptation that we can't stand. We know the test got to come, but lead us not into temptation that we can't handle. But deliver us from all that is evil. And we say that because we want to give your name the glory. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Father in heaven, we come now in behalf of Brother Davis. You know his condition. You know his mindset. You know how his physical body feels. You, you know how he thinks. You know his circumstance. So we come in, in his behalf. We come on behalf of Sister Davidson and, and LaBeas and the Davidson family. Father, in Jesus' name, we come 
in their behalf, we come in behalf of the Austin family. Father, we pray for the recovery of Brother Austin. We pray that you will give him vision and, and give him strength. Father, we pray for wisdom and strength and power for Sister Austin. She may rule her children in a way that you will be glorified. Father, we come in behalf of the Donaldson and the Wells family in their time of bereavement. Father, we pray that even in bereavement, we know that the devil looked for ways to show up. And we pray for peace. And we pray for comfort. Oh, Lord, touch in Jesus' name. Lord, all of those that are represented here today, Lord, we thank you for the two that came that were requesting prayer and church membership. And Father, I pray that you will encamp angels around them and their families and protect them and provide for them. Now, Lord, with me being the least of all, continue to give me wisdom and understanding and power to do what you've called me to do. Allow me to lead my family in a way that you would have them to go and to lead greater friendship in the way that you would have them to go. Lord, you are my Lord and you are our Lord. Yes, Lord. And it is you that we depend on. And before I close this prayer, remember the Morris family. Lord, you know what they stand in need of. You know each situation. You know each one. And you know what each one is going through. But Lord, we know that it, the devil is busy. But you are busier. We know that the devil is powerful, but you are all powerful. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So, Lord, we turn to you right now. We are leaning and depending on you. Yes. You're a protector and a provider. We're leaning and depending on you. And then, Lord, when it's yours to call and ours to answer. And we got to come off the battlefield and study the world no more. Be with us in a dying hour. Take our souls home to rest with you. And we'll be careful to give thy name the praises. Now may the grace of God, the love of Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each of us henceforth, now and forevermore. And the people of God said together, Amen. God bless you. We love you. Amen.